Stop creating checklists and standard operating procedures that your team will never use. In this video, I'm gonna show you why you don't need to document everything in your business. And instead, I'm gonna show you how we create visual systems that enable our people to run and scale our businesses without us. So if you've been told that you need to create checklists and SOPs for literally everything that your company does, this video is for you. Now, if you don't know who I am, my name is Ryan Dice. My partners and I manage 17 companies across our $200 million holding group. So we know a thing or two about systemizing businesses for scale and exit. And what I'm gonna show you now is the most critical piece of a business operating system that everyone forgets about. They're called value engines. All right, before we get into the nitty gritty of how you actually go about mapping and documenting what we call value engines, I wanna give you three core principles that really define how we go about documenting systems in our businesses and frankly, why it works a lot better than the way that everybody else uh, tells you. Core principle number one is I want you to only document the critical. And this is important. I refer to this as the e-myth myth. Now, if you have not heard of the book, The E-Myth, you probably have been living under some business rock somewhere. It is one of the uh, most read, most recommended business books of all time. And for good reason, it's a great book. It has a lot of great ideas. But unfortunately, the core idea of that book is that you as a business owner, if you want to be truly free, need to document and systemize literally everything that happens in your business. And while this is generally true, it doesn't actually work that well in practice, especially if you do what I did, which is shut down your entire company for a month to do just that. Now, this is not an exaggeration. I did that. I literally went on vacation. While I was on vacation, I read the e-myth. I got, you know, engaged. I got, frankly, a little bit too excited as entrepreneurs are apt to do. And I remember coming back from vacation, walking in on Monday, calling an all-hands company-wide meeting and declaring, we're not gonna do anything new at this company until absolutely everyone in the organization has documented absolutely everything that they do. Well, when I made this announcement, a couple things happened. Number one, some people panicked because they thought that they were all getting fired and I was having them just document their stuff before I showed them the door. Uh, and another group was just frankly ticked off that I was asking them to waste time creating a bunch of documentation. Needless to say, nobody was happy, but we powered through, we pressed on. I was able to kind of rally everybody to the cause. And when we were done, like I said, about a month later, we had it. Literally binders filled with color coded tabs and all these beautiful, amazing checklists that documented everything that we did in the company. I felt so good about it. I felt so proud of it. And this is not an exaggeration. Literally no one ever looked at those checklists ever again. It was one of the single biggest wastes of time. Core principle number two is you need to understand the difference between value drivers and value chains. Now this is really important because when you first started your business, there's a really good chance that you are successful because of one or two specific value drivers. And a value driver could be something like maybe you're really good at marketing or maybe you're really good at sales. Maybe you're really good at fulfillment. Um, maybe you had a particular um, proprietary piece of intellectual property, something that nobody else had. Stand alone, all of these little key advantages are what's known as value drivers. And they're essential if you want to be successful. The challenge is, is that entrepreneurs, as their companies scale, they never get out of the focus on the individual value drivers. And what we need to do as the company scale, if we wanna start working above our business, not just in the business, we need to shift our focus to value chains. And so where I, whereas a value driver is one particular value driver, uh, a value chain is a collection of value drivers to varying degrees of importance that combined are what really produce the value in the business. In other words, it's not about just getting one thing right. It really is about getting a whole lot of little things right. And this is one of the most difficult shifts that founders, that entrepreneurs need to make. This shift from value driver mastery to value chain mastery, but that's what we're gonna be accomplishing here. Now, core principle number three is you've got to visualize to optimize. I've said it before, I'm gonna say it again. You cannot optimize if you don't understand something and you can't say you understand something if you can't visualize that thing. So you, you might be able to explain to me how your company works, but can you show me? I submit to you, if you cannot show on a simple diagram and a simple flowchart, how your company creates and captures marketplace value, there's a really good chance that you don't fully understand it. If you don't fully understand it, really good chance that you can't fully optimize it. But good news, we're gonna be solving for all of that 
in this video. So let's get into it. All right, so before we dig into too much, I should probably define exactly what a value engine is. So a value engine is simply a visual representation of how a company creates and captures marketplace value. Basically, how do you go out there and get new customers and clients? How do you fulfill the customers and clients that you already have? And how do you create or improve the products and services that you have? Now, this is important because kind of these are the three things that all companies do, right? All companies make stuff, all companies sell the stuff they make, and all companies fulfill the stuff they sold. What you need to document are two or three of those value engines. We're gonna get uh, into the order in just a second. When you actually get into this, uh, I'm gonna be demoing, I'm gonna be kind of showing you um, my impromptu whiteboard, and I'm gonna show you how we use sticky notes. It's a really simple process. You know, when you're done, it eventually turns into a, you know, prettier, more professional looking flowchart like this, you know, or like this. So to get started with this, all you really need are number one, some sticky notes, you're gonna need a Sharpie and you're gonna need a whiteboard, some type of writing uh, surface. I wanna go back to the different types of value engines because there are really three different types of value engines that you need to know about. The first type is the growth engine. And the growth engine visualizes how you go about attracting and converting new customers or clients. So if I were to ask you right now, how do customers happen in your business? How do clients happen in your business? There's a really good chance you could tell me but could you show me? Second important type of value engine is the fulfillment engine. As the name suggests, fulfillment engines visualize. They document how you deliver upon the promised value. So whatever it is that you sold in the growth engine, the fulfillment engine is going to show this is what we do after the sale is made. The third type, the one that we're not gonna get into in this video is the innovation engine. And the innovation engine documents it, visualizes how you create, how you update, how you improve your offerings. Depending on your type of business, the innovation engine could be really, really important if you're a product-based business, if you do manufacturing, if you're a software company and you wanna show how you go about uh, creating new features, then innovation could matter. Because if you document, how customers happen, and if you document how you serve those customers once you have them, what you've effectively done is you've, you've documented, you've visualized the entirety of the customer journey, and that is what we want. All right, so let's get into the step-by-step -step of how you go about mapping your very first value engine. Before I show you here, though, I did wanna let you know, uh, I wrote a comprehensive report on exactly how we do this. I will link up to the report in the description, but uh, while I'm gonna show you, if you'd rather read through how this happens, I do cover this uh, in great detail. So if you wanna do this with your team, uh, just know that that is there, that is available uh, inside this report. Step number one is we simply need to identify what the heck is the engine uh, that we are mapping. So if you look over here, you're gonna see here, growth engine, mommy fit. So in this case, we're dealing with a fictitious business called uh, mommy fit. They sell fitness training and equipment to stay at home moms, e-commerce D2C company. Let's go with this, you know, as the example. So I just wrote up here, growth engine, and then the, the particular uh, brand. Now I'm gonna encourage you to start with your growth engine as well. Step two is we want to define the triggering and the ending event. So the triggering event speaks to what starts this entire process. Now for a growth engine, we answer that question really by, by saying like, how do people become aware that we exist? So, you know, maybe you run advertising, maybe you sponsor events, uh, maybe you buy lists and hand those over to your sales team. Uh, maybe you're almost exclusively referral driven and you deal with walk-in traffic. The point is there is some way that people find out that you exist. Similarly, we also need to define the ending event. We need to decide ahead of time, when is this particular value engine going to be done? Typically growth engines are done when the sale is made, when the contract is signed. The triggering event for a fulfillment engine is usually a sale is made. Fulfillment engines tend to begin where the growth engine ends. That's why I say if you do these two, you combine, you have the entirety of the customer journey. And as for when a fulfillment engine ends, that's gonna vary from business to business. What we usually like to say is, we're gonna have a fulfillment engine end when we ask for a testimonial, ask for a customer story, because you're unlikely to do that until the promised value has been delivered. But again, let's say for right now, here we are, we are mapping this growth engine for Mommy Fit. We're gonna say, how do people become aware that Mommy Fit exists? And it's really, really simple. Um, they're gonna start with Facebook ads. Uh, they also run some Google ads and they do some Instagram stories and reels. So we're gonna put that here. We're also gonna go up here. We're gonna write the word start. Trigger event done. What about the ending event? And in this case, we're gonna say that the ending event, again, is a purchase was made, purchase was complete. We're just gonna put that over here for now. 
put it somewhere over here in the right hand, lower right hand corner. You might wind up moving it around later on. So there you have it. We've got the triggering event. Uh, we have the ending event. Now what we need to do, step three, is we need to begin to brainstorm the tasks and activities between the start uh, and the end. And to do this, there's really only two shapes that you need to know about. Shape number one is just the square. And the square is a simple task or activity. Something happened. The second shape that you need to know about is the diamond. We use diamonds when it's what's known as a gateway or a decision diamond. In other words, when there's kind of a fork in the road. But the way that we go about mapping this is we just simply ask one question over and over and over again. And that one question is, then what? Now, I know that seems a little bit silly, but follow along with me here. Somebody saw a Facebook ad, a Google ad, an Instagram story are real, then what happens? And, and if you're doing this with your team, that's just the question you'd ask. Okay, team, so this is where it starts, then what? Now, if I were doing this with my fit, they would tell me, um, well, then what happens is we're gonna send them to the seven day mommy fit challenge, right? Because that's what this uh, company does. They, they drive ads into a registration page where people are signing up for this seven day challenge where they're getting free videos uh, and things like that. People see these ads, then they go to this particular sign up page. Great, got it. Then what? Now, in this case, the team, if they're clued in, are gonna say something like, well, it depends. And when you hear it depends, that is your signal to turn the square on the diagonal. And in this case, it depends on what? Well, it depends. Did they register or not? Because if they didn't register, right, then in that case, we're gonna need to run some retargeting ads, right? So we've, we've got all these right here and they are driving toward the seven day mommy fit challenge page. The question then is, did they register? Well. If the answer is no, they did not register, then we're going to run some retargeting ads and those retargeting ads are gonna hopefully send the traffic back over here to this page. So this is the flow they go through if the answer is no. Now, what if in fact uh, they did? If they did register, we're going to deliver the series, right? Pretty simple, if it's a yes and they did register, we're going to deliver the seven day challenge series. That, that's gonna happen in this stage. But you can see here, this diamond shape, if you get to a point where there's a fork in the road, you go, oh, I don't know, it kind of depends. If they opt in, this happens. If they buy, then this happens. If they don't, then this happens. If they ordered you know, the, the blue version, then this happens. If it's a red one, then it's gonna be this other one. Anytime you reach a fork in the road, that is a signal to turn that square uh, on a diamond and to show how the different flow is gonna happen. Look, none of these steps, no core value chain in your business is just a perfectly straight linear process. There's always going to be little forks in the road. Then what happens? Well, um, hopefully they click on an offer link because in every single one of these challenge video series, we're gonna be encouraging them. Hey, if you like this, then you should buy our program. You should invest in our training videos. So that's where this goes next. Did they click on an offer link? Uh, yes or no. Um, if the answer is yes, they did, well, great. Now what we're going to do is they're going to go over here to the workout kit sales page. They're gonna go over to our sales page and they will hopefully sign up from that. Um, if they didn't, that's okay. Um, we have some follow-up emails that we're gonna be sending and hopefully at some point, you know, if, if this right here is a no, then hopefully at some point these follow-up series will go ahead and bring them back over here to the workout kit sales page. Then what happens? Well, you know, it depends. Did they buy? Did they purchase? Right, did they buy? Did they purchase? If no, again, that's okay. We've got some follow-up series uh, that's going to uh, follow up with them. And if they did buy, then we're going to make them an offer for the deluxe kit upsell. And at this point, whether they buy this or not, we are going to complete the purchase and we are going to begin fulfillment, and at this point, we will consider this particular process done. This is the end. Couple of points I wanna make before we move on to step number four. Point number one, um, I want you to make sure that you're documenting what is, not what should be. That is so incredibly important. Oftentimes, when I'm going through this with clients or portfolio companies, they wanna say, oh, well, I know we should be doing this. We wanna document what is, because again, we want to visualize so that we can then 
optimize. Now, if you know that you're gonna be doing something soon, you can use a different colored sticky note or something like that. So we need more traffic. Great, let's add some more sticky notes to the front. Customers, clients aren't converting at a high enough rate. Okay, well maybe we need to add some more steps to the sales process. People are you know, not buying. Okay, maybe we need to add more follow-up. Optimization equals adding more sticky notes. Step four though is gonna be really important. In step four, I want you to hold a stakeholder review meeting. The stakeholder review meeting is a fancy name, but basically what you wanna do is you wanna get everybody involved in this process. So typically it's gonna be people in the marketing, you know, in sales teams, if, if it's a growth engine, maybe on the product and services team, if it's a fulfillment engine, but you just wanna ask them, hey team, as you look through this, what did we miss? And in this case, the good folks at, you know, Mommy Fit, when they were going through this, they were like, hey, you forgot about the weekly workout videos. Remember how uh, every single week we send out a newsletter with a new workout video and every single week that's also designed to drive here. So this is another awareness piece. Um, and frankly, the people after the email follow-up series, if they don't buy, well, they're added to this list as well. That's the important aspect of the stakeholder re review meeting. You're gonna find the different pieces that maybe you missed out on. Step five, this one is really, really important. And this is when we actually finally get back to that pesky checklist and SOP front. I wanna be clear. I'm not saying that your business shouldn't have checklists and standard operating procedures. I didn't say that. I'm simply saying you don't need to have checklists and standard operating procedures for everything. So what should you have a checklist and a standard operating procedure for? The way that we do this is through what we refer to as a value engine audit. I actually describe how to do this process uh, in the operating system uh, case study that I linked to below, as well as to another video that I'm also gonna link to in, you know, in the description. But the process is really, really, really simple. What you do is you're gonna audit the value engine and you're gonna say, okay team, of all these different steps and stages, what are the ones that we absolutely positively cannot afford to screw up? You know, and, and maybe the team goes, hey, how we run Facebook and Instagram ads, that's, that's really important. That's what we refer to as a power stage. So we're gonna uh, draw an asterisk around that. And same with like this weekly workout video. That's important. That, that gets a lot of our prospects who didn't buy the first time re-engaged because, you know, we found that people really sometimes need to go through this challenge a couple times before they're ready to buy. So that's a really important power stage. You know, this whole delivery process here, aspects of it are automated, but that's that's really critical. We should have checklists around that. And, you know, same with how we go about building and optimizing um, our, our sales pages. That's another critical component of it, right? So what we've identified here is one, two, uh, three, four truly critical, what we refer to as power stages. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna ask the question, okay, who on the team owns this? Hey team, who's responsible for Facebook and Instagram ads? Maybe somebody says, oh, well that's, that's Mary. Okay, Mary, the next time you set up a Facebook Instagram ad campaign, I want you to document exactly what you're doing. Don't stop what you're doing to do it, right? Just do document while you do. Now, if you do this, a couple things are gonna happen. Number one, you're only going to document the critical, right? So what that means is, uh, as a company, you're not going to have hundreds and hundreds of checklists and SOPs that nobody ever looks at and it's a giant waste of time, right? We might have 10, 20, 30, but we're not gonna have 100, 200, 300. Step six, really, really simple. Once you've done the um, stakeholder review meeting, once you've identified and documented some of those power stages, I'm gonna encourage you then uh, to finalize that into some type of flow chart tool. There's a hundred of them out there. It doesn't really matter which one that you use. Uh, and then step seven, once you've documented in a flow chart tool would be to add it to um, your company's operating system. So you can see right here, this is an example of um, you know, my company's operating system. And if, if you go in to, to our company operating system, uh, into value engines, you can see here that we've got all of our different value engines uh, that are here, that are reviewable, that are clickable, that are linkable, that anybody on the team can dig in uh, and they can access. All right, so just to round this out, and I know that this is a pretty big video, so thanks so much for watching. Really important stuff though, but what I wanna be clear is, this is how we document. This is how we pass knowledge down, and this is how we create systems without burning out and without over-documenting uh, every little thing. Also, um, keep in mind that value engines and playbooks are just one piece of a comprehensive company operating system. If you wanna get into all of the other pieces, just know that uh, I do have a full video on how we scaled from 10 million to 200 million using a scalable operating system. So I'll be sure to link that up in the description as well. And finally, 
obviously, if you want uh, our help, my team's help mapping your own value engines, your growth engines, uh, your fulfillment engines, and getting them installed in an operating system, it's literally what we do at The Scalable Company. I would love nothing more uh, than to help you do that. And I'm gonna link up to that, details about that in the description as well. With that said, thanks so much for watching this video. I'm gonna encourage you to take action. Uh, if you got some questions, you got some comments, drop them below. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, and get out there, start mapping, start visualizing, but don't document everything. Deal? All right, I'll see you in the next one.